What she do? Sometimes she do abstract because yeah. she can just start. And what you doing? She say, I'm not sure yet, oh, wow. but I will just. Make. Welcome to the Black Spray Hood podcast. Today we're interviewing Susan Jacobs from Union Island in the Grenadines. Susan is a local entrepreneur and community activist. Susan, what can you tell us about Union Island? Yeah, well, um, it is a beautiful island. And the name Union Island is unique for itself. And it represents the people because union is unity. Union Island together. We believe if we work together, we would achieve more. So for that, because of the name, we try to live as one little family. And apart from that, we are very cultural. Uh-huh. We believe in sports and culture. Uh-huh. Yeah. What kind of sports do you do? Well, we do basketball, football, cricket, netball, volleyball. We believe in marble pitching, kite flying, top spinning. Name it. Oh, wow. So you have a restaurant. Can you tell us how you learned to cook? Oh, well, yes. I learned to cook because from a childhood, your parents, you have to learn. You have to know. From the time you reach like eight, nine, you have to learn to wash your clothes, you learn to cook, different things like that. But I have a passion for cooking. So I would have advanced myself. And I did not go to culinary school, but I've worked in different hotels and I have helped myself develop my skill in cooking. And some I learn on my own because I have recipes that I create for myself because of my passion yeah. for cooking. And more so, you know, as a seven Adventist, you learn different things because you try to stay healthy and do the things that God wants, so with that you would take what you have. And then another thing is what I've learned. When you don't have too many, you use what you have. So because of the resources you have, it's able to help you to create yeah. from nothing to something yeah. more like that. Amazing. And how would you describe your restaurant and your cooking style? It's one of a difference. Because you see, I just, get, well, I am new to food. I am old in food, but for that business, I realize I have to do it wide across the board because most people would give you limited and probably the same thing over and over. And I come to realize as for people coming to our island, they need to try new things, what we have to offer. So for me, I decide to incorporate breakfast, do our local breakfast, like you have fried fish, you have fried bakes, or roast bake, coconut bakes, you have codfish, you know, and you can do different things. Even the sea egg you make from the sea, it depends on what. Or we use a lot of herbs, you know, so I decide to come and do different stuff to come into my restaurant. So you're a Seventh-day Adventist. How is a Seventh-day Adventist, how is the religion different from uh, other Christ- Christianity? Yeah, because we believe in biblical principle. Because according to the Bible, it gives you stipulation as to what you should eat and what you should not eat. And we honor our body because we know our body is the temple of the Lord. And we shouldn't defile it by putting foreign objects into it as to meat and so on. But even for us, we do have, we eat meat and so, but we try to make it as more as possible, wherein if we can eliminate it, it is better for us. So mostly we follow in the doctrine of the Almighty. Okay. And what, what does your faith mean to you? It's very, very special. It's, it's because it's my passion for God. I want to be obedient, you know, and because of that, it helps you stabilize you, give you some sort of stability in your life where you know, okay, you can only live for yourself. You have to come to Almighty. So with that, it helps you and for it gives you a better 
with your children to bring them up in the fairness of God and how you view yourself in the community. You know, it, it gives you better leverage. And um, you have a restaurant, your restaurant is on the beach in Chatham Bay, yes. and you own the building, but you don't own the land. Is your restaurant at risk of future development? Yes, well, definitely, most definitely. Because what had happened for Chatham Bay, it's for many, many, many years, it was owned by, it was privately owned, and the owner for it, he sold it, and the other person sold it, and they were not probably not paying taxes or whatever. Only, however, the government get involved, because it's the government, you can take it back, it's 100 acre, and they would have sublet it to another investor and given them time to develop so that the community can gain from it. However, it did not happen. So they went back to court and the government gained back the land. But during this time, everybody decided to use it for a livelihood so that they can feed their children because we realize we don't have much and we can tourists and people coming to our shores. We appreciate and we are happy to give them what we have as service our food and whatever. And so on it went on and on but now the government is seeking to have investors for development again in the future we know it's because it's not our land belonging to the government eventually if they get an investor maybe tomorrow could be next week we all will have to move but it's a concern for us you know for me I think, as I stated before, our community is united people. We would not allow it to happen like that. Yeah. We are happy, we will be happy to welcome investors, right. but on the conditions. In that way, because I definitely, I would, I would, knowing me, I would, I would not stop and let it slide. I would get my people that was join force, not in a bad way, in a good way, letting people know, okay, the government, you bring your investors, but you need to meet with the people. We have a town hall meeting, we all can share reviews. We said, okay, this is what we would like. Maybe we can get better infrastructure, better school, better medical facilities, everything to make us stand however once that is finished and they agree we can okay you give give us the first preference so that we can still work with the persons maybe from whenever give us a something solid so we know we still feeling our baby yeah. still feeling our passion to be a part of something yeah. and in that way if we do that and we get all that we can you know it make life easier on union. But if the government and they think own the buckets or because one thing I know for sure we won't allow to happen is to let foreigners come in and take and we won't be able to go and have access. We don't want that. So they'll have to walk along with us as a community at large. Okay. Thank you. So you used to work on an island called Kanawan. Can you tell us what you used to do there? What did you work as? Oh, yes, I work at um, the Glossy Bay Marina. I work there as a housekeeper. Then I work as a laundry attendant. And I move, I run, I also had my own business there. I used to operate from home. And I work at the Mandarin Oriental. So I work south and north of the island. There I work as um, a chef, hot kitchen, then I work at canteen, then I work as a pastry chef. Wow, a lot yeah. of things. Yes. And um, when we went there we were told by the tourist office that we couldn't climb Mount Royale. Uh, it was really difficult to climb it because it's been gated off by the resort there. And you said well you could 
if you got permission from the security guard and you know your, your son did a hike up there yes um, so it is possible for local people to still access it with permission yes um, but you also said that uh, the community um, had expected some things from the resort that had been promised and hadn't been delivered. Can you tell us how the community got together to get what they wanted there? Yeah. Well, once what happened, the beach, for example, they leased the, the resort, the land, the develop and so on. But the beach, they had marker boys in the water stating that people couldn't go to the beach and even with the boat you can't go in and the people come together what they did they protest they black yards and days and weeks until they start getting really bad they didn't want to but then for some point they went, they went to court they take they want beat up one the guy he never stopped he was like a rebellious and eventually it paid off because now they have access they can go to the beach because as one song man see job beach is mine we can be any time. You have to the to the land, yes, but the beach, no. Okay. So can you tell us uh, how the organisation worked? How did the community organise themselves to, to, to get these protests and make them successful and go through a court case even? Right. Well, um, well with the guy, the protesters, they, he did it individually. Then people realised, no, we, we, we have to join with him. So they join and every day they would start saying, you know what, you cannot do this, we can't, you can't take off our place, we need our place, this the land belongs to us. They challenge the government, they would write and whatever. But then the police and then they start beating him and dragging him because the investors then they feel well, it's okay, they should be on this side. They might have to go before the court and they start. But however, it got settled because they had to come to a conclusion that the people need access because it will not stop. Because people start coming up. Even with the school, um, when they had the contract, there were certain things they had to do. They had to do roads, they had to make sure they have a better health care, like the clinic, they had to build help with the schools and different things. They had a problem and with the private the two. One on the north and one on the south. The one, they were both joined together, one business. But because they had a follow, so one come to the south and one remained there. So the one on the north had the school by the south. Yeah. And then they decided, you know what, you need to move your school from my property. Right? Bear in mind, all these places were leased. The government property leased to these foreigners yeah so they move so they ask for permission to move the school yeah. so they put the school now the government gave them okay to put the school in our schoolyard right. because that is our schoolyard our place our island our school our schoolyard our park we had meeting we went by the school several times when they're going to do the school they have to show us what the drawing is like what they're going to do how they going about it? We ask question what we need, and then we ask them to give us a time as to when and what would they do, and they promise. So come the builder school, and then they decide. You know what? They're gonna slack up. So we're like, no, 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 no. We need our school. We, you already say that your school is there. No. So get on the ball, and we decide. You know what? Meeting. One day they decide. We call back for a meeting. We get the meeting we go by the school. They said yes. They continued with the meeting, the school, the building. Come now, the building finish. That time they have their school running. Yeah. And children still but it was come like you say, August. They were to finish. Cause we asked for a deadline. And the deadline, the school, they rushed the school and even. Because if you pay people, we should get it within a time. They meet the deadline, but then they said they were not going to open the school. And it was September, it was like August for September school to open. And everybody come together, with children and parents, hot sun for like two weeks. And they start to say, you know what? We're going to do social media. 
And after they hear that, they decide, you know what, come, etc. So we have our secondary school. Amazing. So that just shows the power of the community. Yes. And do you think, obviously, that's tribute to the, the people and what they did. What do you think of the role of the government? Do you think the government has been on the people's side or the investor's side? Do you think the government has done well? Well, to be honest with you, at first he was on their side, but initially we see he did please us because we did get our school and even they wanted to continue a private school and use a school. And they were upset and he said no. The government stand up and said no. You cannot have a private school with our school. So your children are not, because these are the things we were thinking, because their children that used to go to their school are the export that come yeah. and bring their children. Yeah. And we all said, well then this looks like segregation. Well, you think that your children better that they cannot come among our children? No, we don't want that. So it was a big thing and then the government backed us on that and said, no private school. The children must go to the same school. And the school that you build there for must be used for a centre. So I think he was fair. So you're really happy with the job that the government did? Definitely. Back in the people. Definitely. And does that give you more confidence that if there were to be investors in Union Island, that you would be able to get what you wanted? Well, for Union Island, I think we are stronger people. Right. And if we put our heads together, most definitely, we were able to get what we could. We are strong-headed people. We won't take no for an answer. No. Wow. So, um, can you tell us what you like to do in your spare time? Mm, what do I do? I just, I don't know. I don't even know if I have spare time. <laughs> <laughs> because when I wake, I just like be walking. And when I have a spare time, it's just to walk. You know, I always have to do something. I don't know when my day ends, I don't know. Probably I just pick up my phone, see, check to see the message I get. See what, maybe look at something, maybe read, maybe pray, sing. Yeah. Now and, now and then, now and then, I may visit a friend or I may, you know, we have a little chit chat. And you have a big family, don't you? Yes. So while we were in Chatham Bay, we met two golden Labradors. Okay. And we noticed that they were like following the, the yachters, and then the yachters got in their dinghy to go back to their boat, and both of the dogs were swimming out after them. And we even heard that they swam all the way around from Chatham Bay to Clifton. Do you know the dogs? Yes, I know them two dogs. Them two, they. Them two dogs there is racist dog. <laughs> These dogs, they're extra. I mean like, really extra. Man, I never see some dog like them. Imagine it. Those dogs, they're white dogs. They think they're white people. <laughs> if, if, let's say for example, you come on the yeah. beach, they would follow you to the village and the bush, anywhere you wanna go, they're with you. If you come back, they'll swim out to the boat. And if I pass and I call in, me, they pass me like, <laughs> they pass me like nothing. They speak, they have nothing to do with nobody black. Even we all on the beach there. Yeah. And if we call or we say something, these dogs pay no attention to us. Okay, so do you think they're looking for the image of their owners? Well, yes, but I think they pretty feel the white and shoot. Well. Yeah, because even until that, you it, they don't mess with no color people, and I don't understand. Maybe, or maybe no, but they've seen everybody. Yeah. So I don't know, but me, I don't know why. But the local dogs, they go to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think last Sunday. Yeah. Not Sunday gone there. Yeah. The one before. Yeah. They had a dog party. Dog I mean, party. a dog party. Okay. Like a political party or like a celebration dog, party? Dog birthday parties. <laughs> it is. I'll be concerned like so, racist dogs. <laughs> 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 so, yes. Um, this girl, and 
Not only that party, it make news too. Really? It, and it was live on Radio Grenadines. Really? They had all the moments. The dog had it bought the cake. <laughs> had his girlfriend come there or something. <laughs> How many dogs were there? I think it's over 20. 20 dogs? <laughs> yes, all the people. The thing is, all the persons that were invited with their dogs followed oh. along and it was nice and it was fun and barbecue and cook. Oh, wow. And That's why the dogs came. They smelt the barbecue. No, the dog, the dog does no, it's fun and the, per, the owner bring them and, uh. you know, it was just something really nice. And now, everybody's seen. We need to do this every year. So more, <laughs> more people are going to bring their dog. And gonna, it will be a big thing on okay. the island. Okay. Trust me, because you see, it just need an idea. Yeah. Because you and people, we're really together. Okay. we together as a okay. people. So what date is it, just so people know to bring their dogs next um, year? What? I really don't know the dog what they know. This when <laughs> it's when the dog what they come back, so I don't really know. Yeah. But it's last Sunday, maybe if we check from there, oh, yeah. the date we could know definitely. Okay, we can find All out right. the date so people can bring their dogs. Yes. We'll have the Union Island Annual Dog, dog. Party. Oh yeah, I have one more question. You are a big fan of Whitney Houston. Oh yeah. <laughs> if we were to bring Whitney Houston back from the dead and bring her to your restaurant, what would you cook her? Well, I would give her a food of her choice. <laughs> not, I really don't know what she would like. But definitely, whatever she wants, yeah, I would definitely give to her. Okay, and that's what you gave us because we came to your restaurant. We said we're vegans. Yes. And you, you made us an amazing vegan yes. dish. Um, so if you come to Susan's restaurant, Sundip, in Chatham Bay, she can cook to order what you would like. Yes, whatever you like. Thank you so much for talking to us, Susan. You're welcome. <laughs> and I'm happy to be doing this interview as well. <laughs>